Good morning everyone and happy new year's to all of you. As promised, I'm going to show you how I made my delicious raw relish and that's the one I used on all my sliders when I make my sliders over the holidays. Uh, but it's good to have any time during the year. You have it in the refrigerator, it lasts a really long time and it's just simply delicious to eat. But my husband came home with a case of cucumbers, these ones here. These are a little lighter in color because he got them at a real good deal and he only paid $8. Now where are you going to get a whole case of cucumbers for $8? So what I'm going to show you today is because they're a little overdone, these ones here, that's why he got them in such a good deal. Uh, what I'm going to make with this is I'm going to make a cucumber kimchi. And with this nice green one that I have here, that I picked up the other day, I'm gonna show you how I make my relish. So we're gonna start off with the relish. Very simple to make. You need an old fashioned grater, which I'm gonna old fashioned grater, any kind of grater. And this is the one I have. I've had this since the day I was married. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my cucumber, break it in half, and I'm gonna start grating this down. And basically you wanna make shreds. And we're going to drain all the water out of this cucumber. You don't want the water, but don't throw away the water because you can actually drink that water, which is very good for your skin. And this doesn't take long to do. And I can, you're going to say, can I use the um, food processor? I guess if you don't care about how they look inside the jar, you can use a food processor, of course. And if you shred them, you're going to get nice little long bits like this. But when you drain the water out of it, it won't be as stiff as this. It's going to be very, very pliable. But yes, if you want, you could dice them by hand if you want. Or again, like I said, you can use a food processor. But I prefer this old-fashioned grater. Try not to lose a fingertip there. Because that's the way I always do it. And I feel much comfortable doing it this way. I know that every strand is going to be pretty much the same. Now, if you have an electric um, grater, you can use that. But it really doesn't take long, even if you're doing it by hand. But remember, you don't need all these tools to be able to make this relish. You can simply take that cucumber and cut them in tiny, tiny cubes, and it's going to work just as well. And this is not going to be a cooked relish, it's going to be a raw relish, but still it's going to last a long time in the fridge. That's if you don't eat it. Okay, so we're going to take this, these butt ends out into compost and we're going to have our shredded cucumber. Very simple to make guys and you need very, very little ingredients. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in a strainer and a bowl or some sort of container underneath where I could catch the liquid because you want to be able to drink that liquid and not throw it out. Just a small strainer. You're going to say, why is it so small? How are you going to fit all of that? Because as you're putting it in, you're going to push it down and trust me, by the time you're done here, you're going to have a pile of nothing. So, I say try one cucumber to start off with, and if you like the relish, the next time you can make two. But for now, just stick with one. You're going to have plenty of relish, trust me. It'll fit a jar, for sure. And that liquid. The liquid is very good for your skin, your hair, your nails. It hydrates you. So do not throw away that juice. That's why cucumbers are so good for us because they hold so much water. But in this case, we want to get rid of the water. But we're not wasting the water, like I said, we're going to drink it. We want to keep only the pulp. And that is step one. 
So we're going to sprinkle just a little bit of salt on top. That's going to help speed the... Actually, you know what? I'm not going to put the salt now because I want to drink the water. But otherwise, if you're not one that likes cucumber water, what you could do is sprinkle the salt on top of the uh, cucumber. That helps push out the water from your cucumber. And if you have one of these tools, this is belongs to my mortar. You can help push the water out of the cucumber. So while we're making our kimchi, we're going to put this aside and it's going to start making water. And every once in a while you go by and you just give it a push. And help guide that water out. I'm just going to show you how much water there is already. I'm not sure if you can see it. But we're not going to throw that out. We're going to put that in a glass. And we're going to drink it. So I'm going to put this aside. And we're going to start off with these overdone cucumbers. Now, I mean, you know, you can eat these if you want. But I prefer my cucumbers. If I'm going to eat them, um, if I'm going to eat them, just like that, I prefer my cucumber a little less, uh, a little less done, and I like them a little less, a little greener. So what we're going to do with these are very simple. We're going to cut them in the length that we want our kimchi. So we can either make them shorter. We can do this. Depend how long you want your kimchi. So we're going to go there. Try and get them all the same. Try and get them all the same size. And here we go. Off to the end. We're going to cut these first in quarters. And we're going to take off the seeds. Off comes the seeds. And we're going to cut them again in lengths and into a bowl it goes. And this is how we're going to start making our kimchi cucumber. Now basically, you can do whatever you do with uh, when you make your other kimchi. But for now, we're just going to take off the oops, take off the seeds. and just cut them again. So, first we do quarters. Seeds come off. And then we're gonna make another slit. I'm a little kited today. There we go. You can even make them smaller if you want, even thinner. If you, could want, if you want, you can divide this into three sections. I'm going to stick with a wider kimchi. Oh, to the I'm using my counter, eh? So how was your New Year's, guys? Did you enjoy yourself? I made so much food, oh my God. And I had the whole family take stuff home. And guess what? We're still eating leftovers. It's like I can't seem to finish that food. That's how much food I made. And my nieces were... We're so excited. I said, Tia, thank you. I've got food for at least a week here. They took so much stuff home. I never know when to stop cooking. I always overcook. I mean, it's not a bad thing, but... Yeah, I'm thinking about maybe putting some of those sliders in the freezer. They are dressed, but it doesn't matter. I'm just going to take them out when I need them because I can't just be eating that until they're done. I have a lot of food that I still have to finish. Here we go. Now you're going to say, how do I eat my uh, cucumber kimchi? Well, you could put this on rice. You can eat it with rice. If you have tofu, you can have cucumber kimchi with tofu. Really, really good, guys. So don't be afraid. We're going to try and get them all the same size if we can. Now, 
Now, I remember someone asking me, and they said to me, how long do you let it stay out to get a good kimchi? Well, some people keep it out a very long time, just like sauerkraut. Some of them will keep it a long, long time outside on the either a counter. You want it, you want it, put it in a cool place, but not a hot place. You don't want it hot. You want a nice, cool place to put your um, uh, to put your either kimchi or your uh, your cucumber kimchi. Uh, you don't want to put it in a hot place. But some people keep it out like up to a month, and some people they don't like it past three, four days. Some people like more of a fresh tasting kimchi rather than um, an aged kimchi. So that really is up to you. What I suggest is taste it after, uh, I say after two, three days, I, you've left it on the counter. And if you're okay with the tang, then I say, and put them in a refrigerator. And it's always good to have an extra refrigerator. I know some of you don't have uh, an extra refrigerator to put some of these jars in, but what you can do is just make less. I just made some kimchi a few days ago. Well, actually longer than a few days ago. And my niece already took a jar home. I didn't have that much to make. But I will make more. I have more in the garage ready to be made. I've got some more Napa cabbage. So if you love this stuff, plus this stuff is good for you. It's good for your belly. It's good flora in your belly. And if you don't get it completely all gone, that's okay too, because most of that water is going to go from there. You see? If it's not all gone, it's not the end of the world. And it really doesn't take long to do this. My mother used to make a zucchini, something like this, where she would take the center. Actually, she would make it just with the skins of the uh, zucchini. I'm going to have to make that video for you and show you how she used to do it. And those were everybody's favorite. She used to make so much of it, and then all my cousins would come down and why not? My mom made those zucchini skins, and they would say, oh, can I have a jar? Or my mother would just give them away. And that's one thing that I can still taste. If I close my eyes, and my mom's been gone now for over 30 years. But if I close my eyes, I can still taste her delicious, delicious stuff that she makes, or she made. So there we go. Okay. Step one, our cucumber. Oop, let me just wipe this down. Oh, by the way, if you get some good paper towels like this, I mean, I usually use rags, but over the holidays, we had to pick some up because there was no way I was going to have enough rags to clean up my mess. So we did pick up some uh, paper towels. But if you take, and you have good ones, you can actually <laughs> wash these. JJ, behave. That's your sister. Um... If you run them under water, you can actually rinse them and reuse them again. So don't just like wipe once and throw it out because that's wasteful. See, I can actually be using these all day long. So don't be wasteful. If you're going to pick up some towels, uh, I say uh, rinse them and use them again. Do pick up the better ones where they don't break once you put them in water. But yeah, do not throw them out. Here we go. Okay, so now to this, we're going to add salt, just like when we make our kimchi. Here we go. Uh, we're going to put some uh, green onions. Okay, we're going to put a little bit of black ra uh, radish, uh, but you don't have to... Um, you don't want to peel this because you want to leave the black to it because it's beautiful. But you know that just because they call it a black radish doesn't mean that it's black inside, right? It's not black inside. Okay, we have some green onions. I'm only going to put a few now and then I'm going to put a few at the end. 
You can actually even wait to put this at the end. There we go. Some of those now. And we're going to put some at the very end. Okay, we're going to put some uh, heat to this. So we're going to put a fresh pepper. So we're going to add it now so the water comes out of it. And remember, heat only if you're okay with the heat, otherwise leave it out. And these are the ones I call Russian roulette peppers. One time, you'll eat them, and it says, oh, it's not bad, a little mild. And then you're going to take a bite another time when you buy it, and it's like, oh, dear God, what did I bite into? And let me tell you, sometimes, and I eat hot. When I tell you I eat hot, I eat hot. And sometimes when I bite into these, they make me want to cry. So we're just going to put a few for now to start off with. There we go. And if you're going to do relish, like I said, if you're going to drink the water, don't put the salt on the, uh, the relish right away because you're going to uh, drink salty water and you don't want that. You could actually dilute that juice with water and or you could just, just down it down. Okay, so I'm going to get some. Okay, we're going to put a little bit of our... You could even use daikon if you want. Jeez. Here we go. So we're just going to cut them in slivers. But you can cut them any way you want. If you want to put big thin slices, you can do that. Or if you want to do it the way I'm going to do it, I'm just going to put slivers of this stuff. This way, it'll be the same length of my cucumber. JJ. You're going to get yourself into some trouble. There you go. Put some of these in. Funny is that I bought this a while ago, but I forgot I even had it in the fridge. Thank God they last a long time, eh? So, I said, what a great idea. I have the cucumbers. I might as well use my black radish. Okay, so we sprinkled the salt. That's going to help wilt everything down. Um, if you're going to use your hands, wear gloves because the salt will start eating your hands. So, And if you find that you put too much salt in your cucumber, that's not a problem either because you can always give it a little rinse and take some of the salt out. Now, this basically has to sit and lose this water. So every once in a while we're going to squeeze it and run some of this water out. You could actually put this in another container that has holes in it where the water will just drain out. For now I'm just using my bowl and just help massage it out as the day goes by. So when you see the next portion of this, it's going to be maybe in an hour or so, if not longer. There we go. Oop. Sorry guys. Okay, so we're just going to cover this so nothing goes on it. And what we're going to do to this is we're going to add some beautiful pear. And we're going to make a delicious, delicious cucumber kimchi to have in the refrigerator for whenever you feel like having some. You could put a little bit of this on your rice. It's just like having kimchi. You don't want to sit there and eat a whole jar of probiotics. You just want to have a little bit of it. 
Okay, so I'm going to put this aside. Here we go. Cheers, guys. Mm. So refreshing. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed up the process. Instead of pushing it down with a mortar with my fingertips, I am going to put this in a nut bag. And we're going to squeeze the water right out of it. And this way you have better control on how much you can remove. Do you see how much water is coming out of it? Look at that. And the more you take out, the better your relish is going to be because this will continue making water. If you don't get all the water out of it, as it stays in the jar, it just gets to be a soupy mess. So you want to be able to get as much water out of your cucumber. Now you see why cucumber is so good for us. It hydrates you. It's a vegetable that actually hydrates you. I think cucumber is a fruit, actually. JJ! Erica? Is cucumber a fruit? Eh? Technically, it's a fruit. Because it has seeds. If you're so-called like tomatoes is considered a fruit because it has seeds. Cucumber. Somebody's going to say, well, once you took all that water out, what good is your vegetables? Well, it's still good because you drank the water. Hopefully you don't waste it. And whatever's left is going to season your food. Or you can add to your food for flavor and texture. This cucumber has a lot, a lot of water. Look how beautiful the color is too, right? Mm-hmm. Eric, I got some for you, love. Want to come and get your juice, Eric? I got you a glass of juice. As long as you see it pour out when you're squeezing it, you know you got to get more water out. So you let it rest. It's going to wilt down even more, and then we're going to give it another squeeze. So I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so this recipe is basically for one English cucumber. So if you're going to do an Italian cucumber, you're going to probably need two of them. Okay, I just want to show you. Remember the mound we had? And that's what we're left with. You see it? I bet if I squeeze this, we're still going to get some water, but I'm okay with it now. And if it makes a little water, it's still going to be good because it's going to be a little saucy. But look at the texture. It's pretty much, the water has pretty much been pulled out compared to the amount that I used to have. So now I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with this. Behave. Okay, so I am going to drain this. There we go. And I'm going to put that in there. And to this, we're going to chop up an onion. 
and I'm going to use one red onion. Now, if you don't have red, you can still use white because I've done it with white. Whatever onion you have. There we go. Now, if you want a hot relish, then I say go ahead and put some heat. But normally, I don't make my relish hot because when my grandkids come, they won't be able to eat it. Okay, sorry again, guys. My camera shut off. But again, it's how you like it. If you want to put a whole one, if you want to put less, taste it. That's the trick. Taste your food. And if you like the way it tastes, if it's good for you, it's good for me. Maybe a bigger knife. Yeah. See? Every day I learn. Even in my old age, I learn. Okay. There we go. So we've got our onion. Now salt. Salt, you don't want it over salty, but you do want salt in it because not only you want it for taste, but it also helps preserve. So salt, put a little to start, and then, like I said, taste it. If it tastes good for you, that's fine. If it's too salty, then leave it out. Erica, uh, I have some uh, green juice for you, love. Now, I'm using white vinegar, but you can use um, apple cider if you want. I prefer the white vinegar taste when it comes to like my relishes. I'm only putting two capfuls right now, but I'll probably end up adding more. Okay, we're going to give that a toss. Yeah, maybe I will add more onion. Let's see. Okay, we're going to put some mustard seed to this. About a teaspoon of mustard seed. And that adds to the taste and the texture. We're going to add just a little squeeze of mustard. Any mustard. If you don't have yellow, you can use Dijon. It really is up to you. There you go. Just a little bit of mustard. And we're going to add some maple. I'm using a dark amber, but... You don't have maple uh, dark you can use light if you don't have um, if you don't have um, maple you can use uh, raw agave I'm using maple because I ran out of my raw agave the one I showed you had the raw agave in it this one unfortunately I don't have so I'm using maple but if you want to keep it completely raw do the agave and if you um don't care if it's raw or not then you could use maple syrup if you want now at this point you're going to taste it because we're going to be adding some white sugar now our white sugar is uh, we don't put a lot i mean compared to the stuff you buy at the store this has got hardly any sugar compared to the ones you buy the ones you buy are really loaded in sugar um we're going to put some sugar in here because we do want this relish sweet. But like I said, if you don't have, like here in Montreal, our white sugar is vegan. But in the States, I don't think it's vegan. So you might want to get some um, cane sugar to add to your relish. So at this point, you're going to taste it. And you're going to taste it for um, vinegar and sugar. And salt, of course. Yeah, more salt. So 
So am I going to give you the exact measurements? Um, no, because it really comes down to what you want to have as a taste. There we go. Keep tasting it. Just don't eat it all. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to add... one two tablespoons of sugar now like i said ours is vegan but if yours is not think about using a um, a cane sugar i have no cane sugar left so i use what i have notice how it's starting to make water again that's okay if you find it's got too much water, you could always take some of that water out with a spoon. And I will add more onion. So I'm going to put the whole onion in. Maybe a little extra mustard. But that's how simple it really is to make a nice fresh relish that you can really impress some of your friends. And it's also nice to give us gifts. You could get those small jars. Uh, here we have a place called Canadian Tire. So those small mason jars that you can uh, just put some in jars and put a cute little piece of cotton cloth on top. A little bit of jute twine. Tie that up and give somebody a gift. Let me tell you something. They will be very, very happy. Okay. Here's the rest of my onion. And our relish should be almost done. Wow. So, so good. I'm going to put a little bit extra vinegar. So I have like about four capfuls of vinegar. And there is our relish. Very simple. Remember, when you're putting this in the jar, if you find that it's making way too much liquid, just take your, your tablespoon, just push it down and remove some of that liquid and you'll be fine. So taste again before your jar my god it's so good a little extra sugar maybe depends how sweet you want it but remember two tablespoons of sugar in this is nothing compared to what you're gonna get if you're buying relish at the store that stuff is so loaded in sugar it's scary but again you are the one making it if you find that you want to use less than what i did use less it really is up to you so i'm gonna put this in a jar Okay, so here we go. And here you go, guys. You have fresh relish for hot dogs. For hamburgers. If you're eating raw burgers, you can put this on there. And if you're okay with it not being raw, that's okay too. Remember, if you want this completely raw, you would have to add uh, the raw agave and not maple like I did. Or the sugar. It would have to be just the raw agave, guys. So, there is your relish. How simple was this recipe, guys? So, if you like to give this recipe a try, and if you've tried it and you like it, come back. Let me know how you like it. And... I'll see you in a bit. We're going to do some kimchi and I'll see you a little later. So at this point, you can actually start fixing your kimchi. As long as when you bend them, they don't break, you know that you can fix, the, uh, you can season your kimchi. So while that's happening, I am going to uh, start chopping up some ginger. We have a nice big piece of ginger. Good. I'm 
And this is going to be super, super delicious. There's our ginger. Okay, we're going to just taste this to make sure it's not super mm, perfect salt. And you can see it's still making water. Okay, so we're going to add our cucumber to our pot. And to that, we're going to add a beautiful pear and some ginger. We're going to add a little extra green onions. Okay. We'll see if we need more ginger, we'll add it. And to this, we're gonna puree one apple. And some toasted sesame seeds. And we're going to toss this up. Just a little. Because we do have some fresh chili in there. And that's it. And this is how easy it is to make this. And it's so, so good. And I was really lucky because my husband brought home that case of cucumber. Phil, how much did you pay that case of cucumbers? And how many were there? Okay, for 12 cucumbers for $8. That's what, and they were huge. And between the New Year's and now, it's all gone. Okay, so... Very good. We're going to add a little extra ginger, some salt. Thank you. And that's it. Into jars they go. Yeah, I think it's good. One pair is good. Let's taste it. My gosh, so good. And this is how easy it is to make it. Here we go. So taste it. That's the trick. Taste your food. And if you like how it tastes, then you know you've got it right. So into jars it goes. And we're going to put this. We're going to leave these out. For at least three days and we're gonna taste it and see 
how we like it. If we want to, uh, we'll see if we want to keep this out longer. But otherwise, three days, it should be fine. And you should be able to put this in jars. Sorry, you should be able to uh, put them in your refrigerator and they'll be ready to use. You could actually eat it now. If you really want a fresh, fresh kimchi, you can just take some of this and put it next to your food. So I hope you like this video guys and if you give it a try, come back, let me know how you like it and guess what guys, I'll see you in my next video. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawsome Kitchen. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends.